of political science and discussed political science as the branch of philosophy. Next scholar is Abdurrahman al-Shirazi, famous book composed by him, Al-Manhajul Masluq Fi Siyasat al-Muluq, a kind of other literature that deals with Shura also in detail. Ibn Qayyim al jawziya the famous follower and scholar who followed Ibn Taymiyyah in all his thoughts. His famous book, at al Hukumiyyah Fi Siyasat al may be categorized as an idealist writing that emphasized mainly upon the caliph, caliphate as an ideal institution of Islamic political thought. His Khilafat al-Shari'iyya has a remarkable impact upon the political thought developed later on by the Muslim philosophers and thinkers. Hamadani's Zakhirat al-Muluk, though may be categorized as one of the mirrors of the princes, but it is different in the approach and methodology applied by him in dealing with these political issues of Islam. It is different from the mirrors of Prince, number one, because it is not borrowed from Persia, as this is by Rosenthal and others, that the other literature or the mirrors for princes is basically taken from the Persian culture and civilization. This Zakhirat al is deeply rooted in the Islamic text, the text of the Quran and the Hadith, and the first four caliphs of Islam. Second, the sources, sources of Zakhirat al are 100% original, not secondary. And the advices provided by Zakhirat al are not of political in nature. These are basically of mystic in nature. Uh, that constitute the scheme of his political reforms emphasized and introduced by Sheikh Hamadani in Indian subcontinent, especially in Kashmir. His Zakhirat al may be compared with the Siyasat Nama composed by Nizamul Mulk Tusi, the most famous treatise in political thought. Here, Siyasat Nama of Nizamul Mulk Tusi may be considered as a heavier that may be given more weight, weightage than that of Hamadani's work, Zakhirat al Zakhirat al had no such experiences behind it that was experienced by Nizamul Murtusi as a successful administrator and prime minister for near about 30 years under Al Arsalan, the Saljuki ruler, and then his son Malik Shah Saljuki. This experience, long experience as an administrator and prime minister, enriched the political thought and action discussed by Nizamul Muktusi in Siyasat Nama. And that has no parallel in the history of Islam because other scholars of political science in Islam had no such greater experiences. Of course, Ibn Khaldun was involved with the politics of different states, but that politics was a kind of conspirational politics. He was not an administrator. He had not so experiences of the actual administration. So his al muqaddama may not be given a parallel to the Siyasat Nama composed by Nizam al -Muktusi. But again, there are differences between Nizam al -Muktusi's Siyasat Nama and Shahi Hamadan's Zakhirat al Siyasat Nama may be discussed as a treatise that emphasized upon an utilitarian approach. And this utilitarianism, as discussed by some scholars as Islamic one, Muslim one, this Muslim utilitarianism, if it is correct to be pronounced, may be compared with Kautilya's Arthashastra, the oldest treatise in Indian history, dealing with the diplomacy and art of the government. 
وائل زخیرة الملوك آف شیف علی حمدانی اپلائیز بیٹیکلی دا مستق اپروچ ان ویچ دا اسپریچوالیٹی آف اسلام ڈومینیٹس آل ادر آسپیٹس آف دا بک سیکنڈ دا زخیرة الملوک ایڈیم is idealistic in nature. He narrates the institution of Khilafah, the institution of Khilafah, and quotes in detail the holy verses of the Holy Quran. Bismillah rahman rahim the Holy Quran declares in chapter Swat, verse number 26, Ya Dawood, inna ja'allah ka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum bayn al nasi bil haqti. O Dawood, we have made you wise in the earth. So settle the disputes with the righteousness. Again he quotes the prophetic tradition. as sultan zillullahi fil earth. The ruler is the shadow of God on the earth. So he should reflect the divine attributes. But this idealism of Shaykh Hamadani is somewhat not be maintained while dealing with the institution of the Khilafat in detail. He has no concern with the structure of the government, whether it is Khilafat, it is Sultanat, or it is Padshah, kingship. According to him, all these different structures and forms of government are valid if the justice is implemented honestly in the society. Implementation of justice is more important <coughs> to Shaykh Ali Amadani and he doesn't bother about the institution itself. If justice is implemented, fundamental rights are ensured, then that government is called by Shaykh Hamadani as an Islamic government. Here also, his approach to dealing with the basic rights of the citizens is something questionable. The rights dealt by Shaykh Hamadani, as far as the Muslim citizens are concerned, okay. The 20 rights. But the 20 rights again, dealing with the non Muslim citizens, with the reference of the covenant of Hazrat Umar with the Christians, Ahlul Kitab, in my opinion, is not up to the right, not up to the mark. This may not be implemented and understood with the literal interpretation provided by these scholars. The scholars in the modern times, like Rashid al Ganushi, like Nijatullah Siddiqui, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, Tariq Ramazan, and other scholars have emphasized upon a pluralistic nature of Islam. And the covenants, historic covenants, implemented by the great righteous caliphs and rulers may not be implemented in total with the letters and spirit both. The, the letters may not be implemented in modern times in total, rather the spirit behind these covenants should be maintained. Otherwise, Imam Ibn Qayyim al jawziyah and all the, almost all the classical scholars of Islamic political thought, they have discussed these covenants <coughs> with the spread and the letter and emphasized upon the implementation of these covenants in the Islamic State. This has been questioned. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.